Well, folks, welcome back, everybody. Rudy with Alpha Investments, how's everybody doing today on this beautiful throne of Eldraine? Box opening discussion video. Today, we're going to talk about <coughs> a little bit more secret lair conversation. That's going to be today's video. Uh, Terry, Terry G, thank you for being a very kind patron. Enjoy the fancy schmancy good cards you get, and hopefully... You don't get crushed, and I hope you get some good pulls today on the old Drano. Do we have secret codes? We don't have secret codes anymore. So thanks again, Terry. Good luck, and uh, may all the Okos and all the Foilies be your friend. So we're going to start today's conversation off with uh, Rudy. Let's talk about the state of magic. Oh, terrible rare. What a way to start. And uh, Rudy, can you please talk about the secret lair thing a little bit more? Sure, why not? Rudy, first of all, do you like Secret Lair? Do you hate Secret Lair? I actually like the product. I think it's a cute little fun thing. I really don't have anything negative to say about the fancy packaging and the really unique artwork they're putting with the product. That's really not an issue at all. I think it's actually pretty cool. Uh, boom, Royal Scions. Very nice first mythic, everybody. So, nice little start there. See, the problem with Secret Lair is not that the cards are ugly or that the packaging is bad. Or even the price is overpriced. Oh, Fable Passage already? Such a good card. The problem is the rate of speed. How they're executing. That's the issue. That is, that's the real problem with this stuff. Is that the secret layer really is not this evil end of the world concept. It's just Wizards overdoes everything. The greed monster just destroys them. I mean, they just get so crazy about it. And they just need to calm down and just... Cool off. Just lower the speed. Slow down. You're driving too fast. Just slow down. Oh! Nice little emery. Foil rare. Wow. This is a spicy box already. The Throne of Eldraine. Home run legacy continues, everybody. I mean, my God. I don't even have many box openings left of this. We're getting towards the last seven or eight. Actually, not even seven or eight. I think six more openings. That's it. And it is going to be a retired one. It is out of here, folks. Uh, but no, I just, I just think that overall... Um, nice little escape. Beautiful planes. I think the problem is just the quantity. They need this Wizards as a whole, and not even just Secret Lair. Wizards as a whole needs to calm down. They need to slow down. Ugh, we get this mythic in every opening, I swear. They need to calm down. Cool off the products, the releases. The wall of fatigue is a real thing. And they really do need to just throttle it back some. Everybody needs to kind of just slow down. You know, a long time ago... A long time ago, everybody, when they released Magic sets and products, I mean, there wasn't many products and there wasn't many releases. So when an actual release came along, it was a really big deal. Like, you would only have, like, one Magic release, like, every, like, three months, like, quarterly. Like, one little product would come out, and that's it. Even when I first started doing uh, YouTube in 2016, and I started doing the products and the Patreon and trying to ship and sell a bunch, a bunch of things online. Wow, another Emery. You know, the amount of products was just not that high. It just really wasn't that big of a thing. I'm telling you all, in 2016, 2017, it wasn't like literally every couple weeks. It's, all right, five more secret layers. All right, four, how many Commander products this year? Six, seven? It, it really wasn't like that. I mean, I'm telling you guys, you had your standard box releases, you know, maybe a little summer set. Um, you know, what, a dual deck a from the vault? And I mean, and your one commander annual product. I mean, it really wasn't this really. And again, the further back you go in the timeline of history, it actually slows further and further. Like if you go back to the late '90s, early 2000s, I mean, there were there were. I mean, literally, when a new Magic product was coming out, it was a huge deal. Like it was a major, major thing. Sorry, I thought I saw something on the side of that card. It it was a really, really big deal. Oh, god. Foil Mythic Brazen Borrower. Holy smokes. Okay. Holy crap. Terry. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Um, isn't Brazen the most expensive Mythic in the set? And you just got a foil version in a regular box? In a $79.99 box? You just hit... What is that? A $30 card? Holy crap. Okay. Ooh, Murderous Rider. Oh, well. You're already between Fabled Passages and... Double Emery's and a Foil Mythic now, and then of course Royal Scions, and wow, well, congratulations on turning a profit already. Another Mythic, Harmonious Archon. Anyways, that, that was just the thing. I just don't think people realize, like, when I, was in, when I was in high school and college, everybody, 
We're talking old man Rudy here. We're talking like 2004 range. Like it, a magic product coming out was something like like a major video game release for like like releasing StarCraft the expansion or releasing Diablo 2 or like it was a big deal everybody. Another full rare Piper Swarm. Like you waited and you counted down the days for one release. That's how special it was everyone. Nowadays it's just not like that. There are so many releases. There's no there's no nothing about it is special. Nobody's excited. Nobody's like, "Oh my god, Rudy, so many more days." Woo woo. I mean, the hype train, it's just so overheated. You just don't see that anymore. Like, it, it just doesn't feel as good. Nice little Love Struck Beast, little showcase frame. Or, I'm sorry, Fairy Tale Fame? I don't know what you call this product. And that, that's kind of uh, that's kind of where I'm at with that stuff, everyone. It just really is... I don't know, it's kind of sad to see that kind of change. Because I don't think anyone feels as special anymore with the products. I mean, it's not that we don't like the products. It just doesn't feel special. You know, it, it's no, if you buy a new car every month, you know, by month 9, 10, or 11, and you're trading in your previous month's car, you're not going to be excited. It just gets old news. Cauldron, everybody. Mythic number four, one of my favorite pieces of art. I know it's not worth much, but it's really neat looking. That's the thing. It just really is one of those crappy things that just, I don't know, it desensitizes. It really takes away some of the enjoyment, and that's where I feel like we're at, and... You know, 13 secret layers just since Thanksgiving. Bone Crusher Giant, really nice showcase, very cool. Creepy baby monster guy there, that's creepy. You know, it's just it's just too much. It's not that secret layer is bad, it's just too much. And I, I just don't, I mean, I, all I'm picturing now is, you know, so in February we have five more secret layers. And all I'm picturing is in March, there's going to be another five. I mean, we could be looking at, like, 50 secret layers in a year. Like, can you imagine that? Are you serious? Could you imagine? Castle Garen Brig. And that, that's what I'm thinking about. Like, you know, and then, of course, you know, how many products are they going to do? How many cards? How many versions? Like, to me, that's just like, holy cow. First of all, all right, so box one here. I have nothing to say. Are you kidding me? Please, Terry. You got foil flipping mythic brazen borrower like half the price of the whole box and just that one card and you had double emery fable passage royal scions you still had a four mythic average box that was another good box opening so that, that's kind of where i'm at with the uh the quantity of product everybody i really wanted to kind of talk about that today because i thought it was kind of a a very interesting strange change of pace of what's happening here i, I just don't know where this is going to lead and i don't know how much the markets can absorb or take before it starts to kind of tilt over or start to have some problems that's you know there, there's going to be a point here where we're going to start experiencing some side effects and you once usually you know because you start to hear that rumble you start to hear the feedback from the public and it starts off with whoa wait secret lair that's concerning that they're selling singles direct to market okay and then oh well that one looks pretty cool though and then all of a sudden it's like whoa wait more secret layers whoa wait another so oh, wait it, it converts over from, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I like that too. Okay, this is a lot of them. I'm getting a little nervous now. That's kind of how it starts. To, oh, really? Wishclaw Talisman is our flipping, uh, is our um, foil rare. It's flipping terrible rare. It's got to be, in, I swear that that rare is in every single box opening. There are certain rares that are just common. And that is that is the common rare for this product, I'm telling you. It just It's annoying. I always see that card. I swear we get that in every single throne box opening, and we also hit the foil rare version of that one all the time. Lord of Garenbrig and a nice little elite. See, some of these little uncommon foils and things, I always tell you guys, there's going to be, the future tends to evolve very interesting on what's good or bad, and I think those are the type of weird cards that surprise people. And uh, this castle, by the way, that black specialty land is the best performing one, by the way in the land cycle here. That one's continuing to tick up and hold its value. So we're starting to see a little winner there. Beautiful trapped in the tower. Absolutely stunning there. So, but I, I just I just want to just lay it out there that I think the, the secret relayer thing is fine. I really don't have any major gripes about it. And I think some of the cards are very, very beautiful, but they really need to just slow it down to, you know, I don't know. What do you think, what, Rudy, what do you think would be a good quantity? Um, honestly, I'm thinking something like, I think Wizards likes to do the variety, like five to seven of them at once. 
because of the shipping and logistics. So if they want to do multiples like that, I think it needs to be a quarterly thing. See, I swear we get the outlaw. Every single box opening video, the outlaw show up. We always get that myth. It's like every box opening video that card shows up. It's the most bizarre thing ever. Terry, do you, I mean, have you watched the other box openings? I'm telling you, it, it's just so weird to me. Every time, Worthy Knight. Now, I think it's just that instead of going, I think what happened is we went from that November, December, seven secret layers to January, um, year of the rat secret layer. And now February, Circle Loyalty, Mythic number two, not the greatest. Um, and now we're doing five more secret layers. That's just way too much. I think quarterly would be fine. If you want to do a five pack or something, or even if you want to do another seven, kind of like what they did with the first original seven secret layers. I think that would be fine, but what the heck? What the heck is this? What's going on with this pack? You guys see this? We have in the middle, we have two common cards placed upside down in the middle of the pack. That was super weird. Okay, love strip. Sometimes there's some weird things happen, everybody. But I think that would be the best thing to do. Just do like a once a quarter thing on a certain timetable. Like the first of the month on the beginning of each quarter. And if you want to do a five or seven, I think a five pack would be perfect. And I think that would probably be kind of the best. So that would limit it down to like 20 of them a year versus we're looking at like 50 to 60 a year. That would be like a 50, 60% reduction. And it'd be more realistic and controllable. And I also think that they need to have a nice discount for the if you order all of them and that kind of thing to help promote the variety pack thing. I think kind of like what they did the first time around, but maybe a little bit of a better discount. I think something like that would be a lot better. That's why I think it's the best. Uh, I think that would be the best direction. I think that I really do. I really think that's the best way to do it. Anyways, just laying that out there. Calder, wow, we are striking out on the mythics. Three mythic, terrible on box two here. So anyways, we're about towards the end of this box open. Let's take a look at how we're doing here in the pools. Eh, Star Wars queen. Uh, box one was a nice solid carried by that foil mythic absolutely fantastic box one there box two oh murderous rider showcase very strong very very nice um, box two we got really bad mythics haven't seen an oko in either box opening today on box one or box two here sorcerer's glass terrible um, no fabled passage on box two here either uh, actually no foil rare usually we do two or three foil rares in every box another royal scions Okay, hell, holy duplicate mythics. Okay, so three of our four mythics are exactly the same between the two boxes. That's a little awkward, but okay. Rudy the Dwarf. Last chunk of packs left here. Overall, very solid box opening. Box two just feels like a normal one. I'm going to call box two like a $60 to $80 value here. Box one was a nice $100 plus. Uh, hopefully we can get something nice here in these last few packs. Maybe a good mythic, like an Oko or a Brazen Borrower, or... Hello, an actual foil rare or mythic with the increased foil pull rate. That's very unusual that we're not hitting that right now. Opportunistic dragon. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. At the beginning of box two, we got that terrible foil rare, that witch claw talisman crap. That's right. I completely forgot we had that in like the first pack. And a great henge with a nice, beautiful slipper. Well, um, oops, put that in the wrong spot. Mythic number five is the great henge. Not a bad, it's kind of a nice little mid range there, mythic. That was our fifth mythic, so chances are that's going to be it for that slot for this video today. Um, Gilded Goose finally showed up. Didn't think we were going to get any of the gooses today. Wait, Gilded Goose? Gooses? Geese. Did we just say, yeah, we'll stick with gooses. That sounds funnier, and maybe it'll get me a couple extra thumbs down. All right, Os one night. So, overall, that's all I have to say today. That was my speech on the, uh, kind of the, um, oh my god, once upon a time. Like, wow, we're getting all the good cards in the close here. Anyways, that was my speech on the uh, Secret Lair stuff. Um, I think overall, it just it's not really related to Secret Lair, but more so just the overall rate of speed of everything. There's our another. I was like, normally we get a couple of foil rares. Well, we got one at the end here. Terrible again. Wicked Wolf and a Talisman. Double tap foil rares in this box opening. Absolutely forgettable. Absolutely terrible. Vantress Gargoyle. So... Heading to the close here again, everybody. Thank you all for watching. We got ourselves a good, strong box one and a weaker than average box two. So ending on a wild speaker and a creepy witch chick do. And thanks again, everybody, for watching. Terry, thanks for the patience. I know you've been waiting probably, God, 45, 60 days in your video 
due to the delays. Hey, Fabled Passage in the close. Look at that. We actually hit it. Okay. Anyways, thanks again, Terry, for your patience. Enjoy all the foilies and the rares and the mythics and the good stuff there heading your way. Everybody, thanks again for watching. As always, have a fantastic day.